I am Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I'm going to be taking on a very important topic. That is the failure of high-dose steroids in the Oxford recovery trial. I find that inconceivable. And I'm not just having sour grapes, because I would have bet that this would have shown incredible results. So when I saw this come out in the past few weeks, I thought to myself, how is that even possible? So let's give a little bit of background to what I'm talking about. So what is the recovery trial? So the recovery trial is randomized evaluation of COVID-19 therapy. And it's an international clinical trial looking at treatments that could be beneficial for people hospitalized with COVID-19. Over the world, they have had almost 50,000 participants with 195 active sites. This is a big trial. This is very important and great credit needs to be given to Oxford for the fact that they were able to do this. And they did this across multiple different medications. And here is a list of some of the tests that they did, aspirin, azithromycin, convalescent uh, plasma, colchicine, dexamethasone, you know, um, uh, um, Regeneron, monoclonal antibodies. So they have done multiple tests across various platforms and looking at various drugs to see if they work. Now, this leads me to where I challenged Oxford. And I was asking the very simple question. When they did the initial study in June of 2020, and it demonstrated benefit for low dose dexamethasone, why didn't they continue to research? Because the next obvious question is, have you got the dose right? Have you got the formulation right? And if you want to watch my thoughts on that, you can look at the link below the COVID-19 treatment conspiracy because I called it out. I said there is no logical scientific reason why Oxford wouldn't then continue to optimize the dose. Well, they have actually done it now. Granted, it's about almost three years late, but just the same, the study has been completed. It was started in May 2021, and they completed the collection of data by late 2022, and they have now published it in 2023. So what exactly did it show? And this takes us now to the actual study uh, that was published in the Lancet. So this was just published quite recently. And I'll show you here, this is April 12th, 2023. And in, his, uh, in effect, it says higher dose corticosteroids in patients admitted to hospital with COVID-19, but not requiring ventilatory support. It did not show any benefit. That's in, his, in essence, the finding. There was an excess of pneumonia. They didn't find any benefit with using higher dose versus usual care. And that was the outcome of this. And I thought to myself, that makes no sense. How is that possible? Because let's think about the, the reality of the situation. Now, you have to remember how many lives were saved across the world by this research that was done in 2020. This was the original trial, and it was released in June 2020. Low dose dexamethasone reduces death by up to a third in hospitalized patients with severe respiratory complications of COVID-19. They looked at over 11,500 patients uh, from 175 NHS hospitals in the UK. So this was just a UK based study. And when they looked at them, they found a third had benefit. This study was so big at the time that within days it changed standards across the world. Great credit has to go to Oxford for doing that bit of research. But just because they did well doesn't mean that they can't be challenged on the other stuff that they didn't do, which was about why didn't they continue immediately in July and August of 2020 to continue to explore the benefit of steroids. That was the big question.
But then it leads to an even stranger question. Because when they did this study, they found that lower dose dexamethasone was still just as beneficial. Now, that doesn't make sense. Now, let me tell you how this works. Steroids are steroids. They suppress the immune system. In a cytokine storm, which is what its severe COVID-19 could be described as, or based on my research, a severe autoimmune vasculitis with microclots, if you give them steroids, you suppress the immune system, and therefore you would reduce the severity of this inflammation in the lungs. And if you use higher dose steroids, you should suppress that immune response more. Now, what you could have, and this is the argument, is that when you use higher dose steroids, you get more complications because that's what can happen with steroids. Hyperglycemia, so the diabetes could get worse. There are higher risk of pneumonia. There are a number of other things that can occur that would make the higher dose not necessarily beneficial. And so that's what I would have thought would be effectively the outcome from this is that what they would find is that actually higher dose steroids produced better outcomes in terms of lung inflammation, but the side effects of the higher dose steroids would therefore make it less beneficial in terms of total mortality. But surprisingly, that was not the case. So when we look in detail at the paper, when they look at higher dose steroids here versus usual care here, what they found was that for patients with invasive um, mechanical ventilation within 28 days, 20% versus 13%. So the higher dose steroids actually was associated with a higher risk of ventilation than usual clear. That's a problem, because that doesn't make sense. As I said before, if you are saying that higher dose steroids had complications as the primary mechanism, that's fine, I can accept that. But when you find that even higher dose steroids doesn't do as well as lower dose steroids, that suggests to me that there is potentially a flaw in the research. So, me being curious, I go and look more closely. What was the difference between the study that was done now and the studies that were done in 2020? So, let's look at a little bit more detail. When they looked at these are the baseline characteristics of the patients, for one, it's only about 659 patients in each cohort, as opposed to over the complete cohort with um, the lower dose initially, it was 11,500, so a much smaller cohort. The age group seemed to be about matched. But when we look more detail, for some reason, I guess this site in Nepal was important, but almost 50% of the patients were enrolled in Nepal. Only 30 to 40% in the UK compared to 100% in the initial um, study. Is that relevant? I don't know, but it is a difference that may have skewed the results. Additionally, I think the thing that stood out to me the most is received a COVID-19 vaccine. 50% of these patients had received a COVID-19 vaccine. The reason why I picked that is because I've always said that the minute that your cohort is vaccinated, you have to anticipate that the trajectory of the disease is going to change. It's not going to be the same disease that you had in early 2020. And what it may be reflecting is that in reality, steroids are, are not as effective for Omicron as they ha may have been for some of the earlier variants. And when we think of the tremendous work that was done by Dr. Shetty, who literally had no deaths in his patients using a very well-timed combination of antihistamines and higher dose steroids, 
At the end of the day, outcomes count. And that's the question. How could this not work for high-dose steroids, but work for low-dose steroids? And what are the potential confounders in that research that could have brought this result? What it's indicating in any case is that this is probably a historical perspective because the original variants with regards to Wuhan, Alpha, Delta, um, Lambda, they seem to be able to spread very quickly into the lungs and therefore trigger a much more severe vasculitis than occurs with Omicron. The research seems to be indicating that Omicron tends to concentrate in the central part of the lungs, in the hilar regions, and I've done a presentation on that. And therefore it could point to the fact that steroids in the context of how Omicron presents may not necessarily be as effective. That's an important point to consider. But the principle still remains. I still think that there is a conflict of interest here because the reality is this. If they had found what I had expected, which was a huge difference in mortality with high dose steroids, then the question would have come back to them, was that negligence? Is that fair? I don't think anybody was able to gain from this position. And I think the outcome seemed to be a win for everyone because it then alleviated the concern that we didn't miss an important treatment protocol with regards to severe COVID-19. I think this one will probably disappear kindly in the wind. But I'll just make it clear to everyone that one thing we can be sure of is that we didn't optimize all of the potential treatment options around the COVID-19 in order to see if we could really have made a huge impact to saving lives. That's the lesson that we've learned from the pandemic. Let us never put ourselves in a position where conflicts either of politics or finance ever steps in the way of helping and saving the lives of patients. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you very much for listening.